Hi, in this video I'll be covering how to convert a one column address list that has either the same or different row amounts. When you get a list of addresses, sometimes it's in a good format to do a mail merge. That's when you've got the name in one column, address in another column, etc. If you've got an address list with all that information in one column, it's not that hard to copy and paste and transpose to another set of cell ranges if there aren't too many records, like less than five. When you get a list of records that are higher, say more than 10 records, then it becomes a little more time consuming. Get to 20 plus records, and you might as well forget about taking the afternoon off. But if the records follow a consistent and static structure, then you can use some formal tricks to take care of it quite easily. And if the records don't follow a structure, but have some sort of pattern, there's also a way to take care of that and unstack this data. Let's check it out. So when we're talking about transposing data like this uh, address list uh, or unstacking it, as some might call it, what we're doing is putting it into the row like this. If it's a small data set like this, you might think, oh, I just need to take that, control C to copy, go over here, go to paste, and just paste transpose, and just do it for the all, all the other ones, right? So if we do that, that takes a lot of time, um, and it's a little time consuming, and there's a way to do it with formulas. You can see that I have a formula in here. It's not really a crazy formula, but um, it's not, uh, kind of hard to decipher, but there's other ways that you can do it. Now there's two other ways to do it, maybe a little bit easier. And Excel, there's always different ways to do things. So there's more ways to skin a cat. So let's see how we can do it with two different scenarios. One where we're gonna have similar data where it's static. We'll always know that there's gonna be four cells, uh, first the name, address, city and state, and phone number. And in another case, we're gonna have it where it's a little bit different, it's unpredictable, but there's some kind of pattern. So let's go with the first demo. In this case, it's the same data. And instead of creating that formula or copy and paste, um, because maybe this is a long set of data, what we can do is just reference the different cells in the different columns here. So in cell C1, I'm gonna reference this one, press enter, and then D, I'm gonna reference uh, this one, this second uh, one. And in cell E, do the same thing here, press enter. And then in cell F, I'm gonna reference the phone number, right? So I've got these references here. All I need to do is select that, take that fill handle and then drag it down. And now I've read my references. And with that selected, this range of cells selected, press control G. And I wanna go to the blank cells. So it's gonna select only the blank cells and then delete those cells and fill it up. So basically everything's gonna move up. So that range is selected, right click, delete. You have this menu box here. I wanna shift my cells up. It'll delete all the blank cells and shift everything up. Click okay. And now I have my transpose data or my unstacked data. Select that double click the auto. The formulas are still there. If you don't need them, control C to copy and just place, paste values and the formulas are gone. Let's try demo two now. It's a little bit similar. Now in demo two, we also wanna do the same thing, right? We wanna bring our name, address, and phone number and transpose it or unstack it. But you can see here that there is a pattern going on. We have uh, blank cells that are separating these. And also uh, this instance here, this particular record doesn't have a phone number, but we have to kind of look for a pattern there. So one pattern at, is that there is a blank cell. And after the blank cell is a first name except for this one up here. And we'll deal with that separately once we go into Power Query to do this. So what I need to do is probably turn this into a table first and um, look at the pattern and use the pattern or kind of add to the pattern to make this a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take this, go to data and go from table and range. It says create table, my table doesn't have headers. That's okay, I'm gonna click okay. And Power Query editor is gonna come up. What we need to do is we need to kind of add to our pattern here. So right, we have our pattern here after the null cell is gonna be the name, except for this one. So we're gonna add a null cell here. So what I'm gonna do is use first tables header, bring that header down and it says column one and replace that column one with a null. So right click, replace values. If it says column one, put that null. So now I have a full pattern going on. So after null is a name, after null here is a name, after null here is a name. So you gotta make sure that that's there, some kind of pattern, right? So after that, I need to do some grouping, right? So anything that is starts with this null and before the next null, that has to be a group. What we can do here is add an index column and work off that to give us a pattern. So I'm gonna add column 
and add an index column to start from one. So I've got an index column counted by one. Let's find some way of grouping uh, this particular set of addresses together. We can add a conditional column. And in that conditional column, I'm gonna say, well, if column one, if you see a null there, if that equals null, then bring back the value of that adjoining index column. So now here in this row is gonna bring back one, now here in this row is gonna bring back six, etc. So I will click output to select column and it will be called the index column. Anything else is gonna be bring back empty or no. Click okay. And now we have our beginnings of a grouping. I wanna have Sally's grouping all be ones here. Mike's groupings all be sixes here. And the way we can do that is right click, fill and we'll fill down. And now we've got our ones here, which represents Sally. Our sixes here represent Mike, tens Puneet, 15s Ming. I don't need these nulls in here, so I'm gonna remove that. Click the filter, unselect null, click okay. Now I've got my groupings. All ones are Sally, all sixes are Mike. Don't need this index column anymore. Right click, remove, and I'm gonna group this. Right click on the custom column, group by, and we're gonna group by this custom column. And I don't need to count rows, I just need all rows. And it's gonna create a separate table entry here under the count. You can see this first grouping of one, that table is Sally. Second grouping, the six is Mike and etc. for the other ones. Now I wanna bring back that index column. So I wanna bring back one, two, three, four here, and here, one, two, three. So when I do my next steps where I'm going to pivot this, it's gonna say column one, column two, column three, etc. I'm gonna to need to use that index column M code here, but do a little tweaking to it. And so I'll create an index column, but, and just copy that. Just copy from uh, th that command, table C, control C to copy and remove that step. And in here, we're going, and after this step, we're gonna have a custom column. Control V to paste that M code that I copy. And instead of group rows, which is referencing the previous step, I'm gonna reference the count column here. So delete this, delete that, and just double click count, click okay. And there's another table there. But you've noticed now in the table here, there's a difference. You'll notice it's added another index column and it counted by zero. Oh, I selected zero. Um, you can select the one that starts from zero or one, doesn't matter in this case, but I guess I selected the one counted by zero. Um, but you can see that now there's an index column for each one of these. What I can do now is I don't need these other columns. I'm gonna right click, remove other columns, and now expand this. Click on the expand it, uncheck that. I don't need to have the original column name. Click okay. And now it has given me an index column where I can look at Column zero, one, two, three is gonna be the name, address, state, number. It's gonna only be name, address, city, and state. And so I'm gonna pivot this one. So select on that, go to transform, go to pivot column. I'm gonna pivot with this column and the values that I wanna unpivot are in column one. Click on advanced options. I don't wanna do any aggregation. So don't do any counting, minimum, maximum, click okay. And now we've got our transposed data or unstacked data. Don't need this anymore. Don't need my custom. Click on remove. What's left to do here is uh, put the correct headers here. Name, and this is address. And this is city state. And this is phone. Click on home, close and load. It's gonna close and load into a new sheet. And now we've got our data here. Let's say, for example, I enter something new here. Still gotta follow that pattern. I'll just put Joe and one, two, three, main. And I don't know, any town, but no phone number. Click on data, refresh, go back to table five. And you see Joe has been entered here. So that's how we can transpose or unstack address data. You can actually copy or paste transpose if your data is small. Or if it's a little bit larger and you don't want to deal with Power Query, you can do this way and it's static. Or if you got data that has uneven rows, but it's got some sort of a pattern, you can use Power Query to do the transpose or unstacking of this data. A one column address list is something that you might see. And the way to transpose it or unstack it is easily done once you learn how. Just find a pattern or help make a pattern and you can use the methods I went over to turn it into a more manageable format. These methods just don't apply to addresses. Think of other scenarios where you want to unstack a column of data and you can solve it in no time. To see more videos like this, click the banner at the end.
Still here? Well, here's a joke. What does a grizzly say when he calls customer service? Just bear with me.